So he pulls you inside. You're standing there looking at the door, hoping against hope that he'll come in. And of course he doesn't. What happens next? Todd put me on the ground and handcuffed me and cuffed my ankles and put a ball gag in my mouth. And then he told me he had to go take care of Charlie. And he left me there. And when you say he cuffed you, did he have handcuffs? He had handcuffs and he had ankle cuffs. So he had them there. This wasn't an no. impulse thing. No, he was prepared. Did he cuff you behind your back? Yes, sir. A at that point, was he rough with you? No, sir. He, s he still was Completely methodical. Calm. Really calm and level-headed. And you say you put a ball gag in your mouth. Why do you think he did that? I mean, you're a half mile, three quarters of a mile from the road in the middle of nowhere. I don't know. How long did he leave you there? I don't know, time almost stood still, so I, I couldn't say. Was it five minutes or five hours? No, it was like maybe 20 minutes. Okay. and. Do you know what he did? Did he tell you what he did with Charlie? He went and wrapped him up. And um, that's it. he was wrapped up when I went back out, when I was taken out back out of the building in a tarp, a blue tarp. Uh, had you seen the blue tarp when you pulled up? No, sir. Well, Kayla, I have to stop asking you for questions for a minute and tell you I am so sorry for your loss. I I'm sorry for what happened to you, but I am so sorry for your loss. And it, these things are just stacked on you right now, but uh, y you lost the man you loved and you lost him violently and abruptly. And that's the most traumatic way you can lose somebody. And it's never easy to lose somebody, but if it's after a long illness, we, we prepare ourselves for it going into yeah, it. Yeah, you get to say goodbye. Yeah. And uh, you never got to say goodbye to Charlie.